a very good afternoon everybody welcome back to civics class second year class so today we will discuss a few of the short answers okay already we have discussed all these questions earlier relative relationships between center and the state uh, from this chapter that is fifth chapter i told you you will get two saqs so one from the relations one from the commission so yesterday we have discussed relations today we will discuss commissions and some other important questions and you are going to you know write your uh, supplementary exams or improvement exams next week so the, today will be the last class for you and uh, please uh, you know learn all the important questions which we have discussed i have discussed all the questions from all the chapters i have discussed unexpected questions also and i have explained you each and everything i told you the you know chapter wise weightage if you are learning few chapters if you are not learning complete syllabus at least few chapters if you are learning you will be able to clear your paper don't keep this paper second years na then again you will be wasting one year so don't leave the paper don't uh, leave anything try to you know clear your paper this time so uh, at the end i'll just tell you, you no know, chapters we will discuss at the end of the class today we will discuss the sarkaria commission now the sarkaria commission was a high level commission appointed by government of india central government appointed a high level commission headed by ranjit singh sarkaria why this commission was appointed this commission was appointed to study the center state relations relationship between the central government and state government and to you know give some recommendations or suggestions how we can improve this relations so this commission was set up in 1983 and the commission submitted its report in 1987 and it, it gave around you know 240 recommendations out of which 170 recommendations were implemented by the government in 1997 so we will learn few of the important recommendations of sarkaria commission the first one is strong center sarkaria commission it favored retention of strong center so when this commission it went to you know state governments some of the state governments they suggested that the powers of the central government should be reduced and the powers of the state government should increase so sarkaria commission it felt that if the powers of the central government gets reduced and state government uh, powers are increased then uh, it will be a threat to the unity of the country so the commission it supported it favored retention of strong center it said that the central government should be more powerful than the state government next is cooperative federalism cooperative federalism here the sarkaria commission it suggested that both central government and state government should cooperate for implementation of the policies and programs okay unless both the government cooperate the country may will not develop so cooperative federalism next is appointment of governors the sarkaria commission suggested that the governor of the state he should be a non political person okay? he should not belong to any political party and he should be a non controversial person that means he should controversy okay only such persons should be appointed governor next is appointment of chief minister the commission suggested that the leader of the majority party in the state assembly okay the leader of the majority party in the state assembly should be appointed as 
chief minister that is about appointment of the chief minister then coming to fifth point that is president's rule okay the commission suggested that president's rule should be imposed only in the rare occasions if it is necessary for small things for small issues president's rule should not be imposed it should be imposed only in the rare occasions if it is necessary if state government really or uh, unable to you know handle it there is you know breakdown of the constitution in the state under such situation only president's rule should be imposed okay that is about president's rule then the sarkaria commission it suggested three language formula it suggested that we should adapt you know three language formula throughout the country we should implement three language formula that is, that is one local language the national language and one foreign language that is english so all the mediums and if in every state you have you know medium of instruction you have three languages okay local language hindi and english so three language formula was to be implemented throughout the country then retention of all india services so uh, it was suggested that all india services should be you uh, know uh, abolished okay but the commission said that we should continue with the all india services and autonomy of mass media the commission favored relaxation of unions control that is union government's control over mass media that is tv and radio and all the national programs should be telecast in the regional languages also with this we can preserve the from uh, culture of our country okay so this was the sarkaria commission recommendations of sarkaria commission so what are the side headings strong center cooperative federalism appointment of governors appointment of chief minister president's rule three language formula retention of all india services autonomy of mass media see here i would like to suggest all of you that many times it happens that you are unable to learn all the points okay and uh, with that you get you know stressed and whatever you are learning you tend to forget so learn the answer till where you can remember don't pressurize yourself okay if you are able to learn five points from this answer well and good you can learn five points you can attempt the question if you are you know learning uh, trying to learn the complete answer you are unable to retain it you are unable to recollect it then it is you know waste of your time and energy so whatever answer you are learning try to learn as much as you can don't pressurize yourself don't put pressure on your brain okay don't get stressed okay if you are learning eight points well and good if you are able to learn five points or six points that will also do but uh, uh, try to attempt the question don't leave the questions okay if you are attempting the complete paper the probability of passing is increasing and if you are leaving the questions then there is a probability of getting fail so try to attempt as much paper as you can i just you know uh, suggest my students to attempt paper complete paper 100 marks paper whatever you know see if whatever questions you are perfect write those questions and remaining questions write what you know about that topic but don't leave and don't you know write all rubbish also okay try to be to the point that is important okay next is next question is recommendations by mm punshi commission recommendations by mm punshi commission now this mm punshi commission that is madan mohan punshi okay this commission was again set up by the central government in 2007 
Okay, it was headed by Justice Madan Mohan Munshi. Okay, what are the recommendations? Why this commission was uh, set up again to review central state relations? So here some of the you know recommendations of Munshi Commission. First one is appointment of governor. Okay. So here it also says that governor should not be an active politician. Governor, he should not be an active politician and he should have been given a fixed tenure of five years. The tenure of the governor should be fixed as five years. Then president's rule. Okay, here. Uh, the commission sought to protect the interests of the state by trying to curb the misuse of the provisions related to president's rule. Here it says says that you no, know, uh, the president's rule should not be imposed, you uh, know, uh, very uh, frequently. And if president is rule is imposed, you know, frequently, then the powers uh, will be misused. Okay. So, we should try to impose president's rule occasionally. The next is appointment of chief minister. It is the same point. The chief minister should be a uh, leader of the majority party in the legislative assembly. And it also favored cooperative federalism. There should be cooperation and coordination between the center and the states. Then only there will be overall development. With this, we have completed your fifth chapter. Five questions. You will get two questions out of this five. Ten marks. Next is chapter, uh, from your chapter nine. This is a kind of, you know, important question or I can say it's a sure short questions. The most repeated question for five marks. Provisions of gentlemen's agreement see i told you the weightage for your ninth chapter is 26 marks okay if you are thorough with each and every question laq saq and vsaq of ninth chapter you can attempt for 26 marks plus first chapter 19 marks second chapter 19 marks okay so here you are so you will be in a position to attempt for uh, Attempt for uh, 20, 20, 46, 44 marks. Okay, you can attempt for 44 marks with only three chapters. Then you have you know, election uh, commission. Okay, then you have some simple chapters. You know, if you are thorough with those questions, few questions, you can clear your paper. So, what what is gentleman's agreement? What are the provisions of gentlemen's agreement? Now, this gentlemen's agreement, it was made between the leaders of Andhra and Telangana. Okay, it was made between the leader of leaders of Telangana and Andhra in 1956. Okay, when they wanted to merge both the regions, Andhra and Telangana, uh, they came to an agreement in 1956. That agreement is called as gentlemen's agreement so what are the provisions of gentlemen's agreement the gentlemen's agreement it said that telangana regional Co committee shall be created telangana regional committee it will look into the development economic planning education and public health of telangana region so this telangana regional committee which uh, will be created and this committee will look into the development, economic planning, public health and education in the Telangana region. The development of Telangana region was given to the, uh, the, the uh, was given to the Telangana regional committee. Okay. So this responsibility of development of Telangana region was given to Telangana regional committee. Okay. So, Telangana Regional Committee shall be created and it will look into the development, economic planning, public health and education. Then the next is 
mulki rules it said that mulki rule is mulki means local okay so to to get the education and employment opportunities in telangana area okay the qualification for admission into educational institutions and employment opportunities recruitment to the services in telangana area the people coming from andhra they should stay in telangana region for 15 years after 15 years they will be they will be eligible for admissions into government schools and colleges and for employment opportunities in government departments so mulki rule was fixed as 15 years okay the third is they said that chief minister shall be from one region that is if chief minister is from andhra pradesh the deputy chief minister will be from telangana okay the chief minister shall be from one region and deputy chief minister will be from the another region or if chief minister is from telangana deputy chief minister will be from andhra pradesh like this okay they have fixed it like this then the cabinet the team of uh, chief minister the cabinet shall consist of 60 40 proportion 60 40 suppose there are 10 ministers six will be from andhra and four will be from telangana region and two out of five important departments portfolios shall be given to the telangana this is how the gentleman agreement was made and it was signed by the leaders of both the region uh, that is telangana and andhra in 1956 and andhra pradesh was formed on 1st november 1956 so these are the provision simple points okay i have given six simple points here that is enough next is ap reorganization act 2014 so after the you know, telangana agitation and after the central government passed you know a bill in the parliament to separate telangana from andhra the what is that bill what was that bill which was passed by the uh, central government it was called as ap reorganization act 2014 so according to that act two states will be formed state of telangana and state of andhra now two states are formed so state of telangana will have 10 districts and andhra will have 13 districts now at present these 10 districts are divided into 33 districts so ap reorganization act it said that state of telangana will be formed with 10 districts at present we have 33 districts here and state of andhra pradesh will be formed with 13 districts okay our state will remain with 13 districts then hyderabad as common capital okay uh, ap reorganization act says that hyderabad will remain common capital for both the states that is telangana and andhra for a period not exceeding 10 years in 10 years andhra should develop its capital and hyderabad will be the capital of telangana so within 10 years they should develop their capital hyderabad as common capital then governor there shall be common governor for both the states of telangana and andhra and he will have some special duties he will be vested with some special duties that to for 10 years then now when two states are formed telangana a new state was formed so how many members will represent telangana in lok sabha and how many members will represent telangana in rajya sabha that was also decided in ap reorganization act so according to ap reorganization act there shall be 17 members from telangana 17 members from telangana and 25 members will represent andhra in lok sabha Okay, in Lok Sabha, Telangana will have seventeen members. Okay, seventeen members will be from 
Telangana and 25 members will be from Andhra. Now coming to the Rajya Sabha, members in Rajya Sabha. Okay. Telangana will have seven members representing it and Andhra will represent Andhra will be represented by 11 members. Okay. So there shall be seven members in Rajya Sabha from Telangana and 11 members from Andhra Pradesh. Okay. Now when two states are formed, both the, both the states will have their own government. So what about the legislative assembly? Okay. So the legislative assembly of Telangana will have 119 members and the legislative assembly of Andhra will have 175 members. So as it is a bicameral legislature, so legislative council, Telangana shall have 40 members and Andhra will have 50 members in legislative councils. Okay, so other provision was like, you know, we'll have separate high courts for both the states and revenue will also be distributed. Certain provisions were made for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. Students, this is a very important question. Okay, most important, most repeated question. If you are writing these questions like gentleman agreement and AP reorganization. Next, next important question is basic features of India's foreign policy. Okay. So India after becoming independent, after it became independent in 1947, it played an active role in international politics. Okay, so it has its own no foreign policy. India has its own foreign policy. So let us see what are the basic features. We are following the same foreign policy with some changes in it, but the basic features are not changed. The first is international peace. So India, it is a peace-loving country. You know that we have uh, we have achieved our freedom through non-violence means non-violence methods we have adapted to achieve our independence. So India, it is a peace-loving country. So the foreign policy of India, it promotes peace, friendship and cooperation with other countries. Okay, even if you see the article 51 of Indian constitution, it says that state to work, state should work for international peace and security. A government should work for maintaining international peace and security. So international peace is one of the features of India's foreign policy. Next is Panchashil. I told you we have discussed this Panchashil in two marks also. Panchashil are the five principles. So what are the five principles? This is the most important feature of our foreign policy. Okay. Mutual respect for territorial integrity and sovereignty, non-aggression, non-interference, equality and mutual benefit, and peaceful coexistence. So these are the base, uh, no, uh, five principles under Panchi. Next is non-alignment. It is another important feature of India's foreign policy. Through this, India opposed military alliances. It said that we are not going to uh, no, provide military support to anybody. We are free from the commitment of, you know, to any power block. Okay, we are not committing a, that we will, you know, uh, give our military support to any power block. Okay, we are free from the commitment to any power block. We, we, are, we are against, we oppose military alliances. And faith in United Nations. So India, it extends its cooperation and support to United Nations organization. Why this organization was formed? To maintain world peace. Okay, so India will support UN in maintaining peace in the world. It will, it will contribute in peacekeeping activities. And next is disarmament okay we are against you know using of nuclear weapons we say we will use nuclear energy 
for peaceful purposes and we will not use nuclear weapons irrationally so here in question my students will get the doubt madam then why did you explain the five features uh, two features will not be asked mostly they'll give, they'll get give a question like what are the basic features of india's foreign policy or explain any four features or two features whatever may be the question you should write like this what happens if you are writing only two features it is a very short answer you will not get five marks for it so try to write at least four to five features next question is your 10 mark question another important 10 mark question i'll discuss here uh, Describe the composition and powers and functions of election commission in India. So election commission, it is responsible for conducting elections in India in free, fair and impartial manner. Okay, it is the responsibility of the election commission to conduct elections in free, fair and impartial manner. Okay. So, the com if you talk about the composition of election commission, the election commission, it consists of chief election commissioner and two election commissioners. Okay, basically there are three commissioners. One is the chief election commissioner and two other commission commissioners. And the president can appoint or increase the number of commissioners from time to time. Time. All the commissioners of election commission are appointed by the president of India. So let us see what are the functions, powers and functions of election commission. Election commission, it recognizes different political parties. It classifies the political parties as national party, regional party or sub-regional party. And it also allots them the electoral symbols. Okay, it will give them the electoral symbol. Every political party will have its own symbol. So, these symbols are allotted by the election commission. Then, the election commission will prepare electoral rules for conducting elections. So, it will enroll the new uh, member, new elect electorates like uh, the people who have the citizens who have attained the age of 18 years okay new voters they will add the names of the new voters in the electoral rolls in the list or it will delete the names of the voters who are no more now who passed away who are who are dead now so it will prepare an electoral list it will add the names of the new voters who have attained the age of 18 years and it will delete the names of the voters who are no more then it will prepare a schedule with proper dates for the election it will prepare an election schedule in um, on what date elections will be conducted when the election results will be declared that schedule will be prepared by the election commission and it also prepares model code of conduct. Okay, what is model code of conduct? These are the guidelines you can say or instructions. Guidelines to be followed by the political parties and the candidates during the elections. So this model code of conduct it is also prepared by the election commission. Okay. Then it supervises the machinery of election in the country with the help of other departments. It takes help of the other departments like, you know, uh, police department for security, for maintaining law and order. It will take help of the employees of various departments to conduct the elections in free and fair manner. It will appoint, it will appoint, uh, you know, uh, polling officers okay so it will cancel the polls or postpone the polls election commission can 
cancel the polls or postpone the polls in the event of malpractice. If there is any malpractice in any polling area, then the election commission has the power to cancel or postpone the elections, uh, like rigging okay, or violence. In the event of rigging or violence in any polling booth, the election commission can cancel the polls or postpone the polls. And if it is disqualifying any legislator, okay, it will advise the president of India in case of, you know, uh, members of legislative, sorry, members of the uh, parliament and it will in, advise the governor in case of members of legislative assembly. In case of members of parliament, if any member are, is to be disqualified, it will advise the president. In case of members of legislative assembly, it will advise the governor of the state. So, it conducts the elections and by elections. Elections are your general elections which are conducted every five years. By elections are the elections conducted for the seats which are vacant due to you know uh, death of the uh, representative or due to the removal of the representative or due to disqualification of the member okay whatever may be the reason it, it will conduct the general elections and by elections for Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha and state legislative assembly and legislative council okay it will also conduct election to the office of President and Vice President. So these are some of the powers and functions of election function. Okay, you can expect this question. It is an important question. From this chapter, you can expect this question for 10 marks. Next is we will go to the first chapter again, ten mark question, gun shot question, short shot question. Okay, if you are learning this question, ten marks you can, you know, easily score. If not ten full, at least eight marks you can score. If you are writing complete answer neatly without spelling mistakes, you can score ten marks. Okay, so explain the salient features of Indian constitution so indian constitution it is a unique constitution why we call it a, it a unique constitution because it was prepared after studying the constitution of all the countries of the world so that is why we say it is a unique constitution and it is the lengthiest constitution in the world okay it was prepared by constituent assembly so it is a written constitution we know a constitution is prepared by a body of people called constituent assembly. It is a written constitution or enacted constitution. So instead of here, if you can remember the word prepare, you can write uh, enacted. Okay, instead of prepared, you can write enacted. That means prepared. Okay, so the first point is a written and detailed constitution. We know if it is enacted, it is written and it is written in detail. Each and everything is written in detail. So, Indian constitution, it is a written constitution. Now, at the beginning, it had 395 articles, but at present, after amendments, we have 448 articles in our constitution and you have 12 schedules. And it is divided into 25 parts. Indian constitution, it has 25 parts, 12 schedules and 448 articles. In Indian constitution, it gives each and every detail about the functions of the government at national level, state level and at the local level. How this government should function. And it also explains about rights and duties of the citizens. Okay, if you are writing it like this, it's very clear. Next is, Indian constitution, it is the combination of rigidity and flexibility. 
what do you mean by rigidity and flexibility rigid means cannot be changed easily flexible means it can be changed easily but indian constitution as i told you at the beginning it was prepared after you know uh, referring or studying the constitution of all the countries so we have adapted the features some uh, some of the features of rigid constitution and some features of flexible constitution so if, if that is why we are saying that it is the combination or mixture of rigidity and flexibility so for amendment also we need to follow the method so there are three methods to amend the constitution rigid method flexible method quasi rigid and quasi flexible instead of quasi if you can write word half it is also okay if you don't remember the word quasi so find it difficult to remember you can write half rigid and half flexible method these are the methods to amend the constitution these are two features of indian constitution let us move to next unitary and federal features so we have studied the constitution of uh, various countries and indian constitution is prepared so we have adapted the features of unitary government as well as federal government like for example uh, okay if you talk about the unitary system when there is emergency in india the uh, the powers of the state government will be transferred to central government and india will become a unitary government okay so it is unitary during emergencies and it is federal in normal times so what are the features of unitary government single citizenship we have single citizenship uh, you are you are considered as a citizen of india your uh, regional identity does not have any importance so that is the feature of unitary government then we have single election commission single election commission it is conducting election for the central government as well as for the state government when we talk about the federal features we have bicameral legislature at the center okay in some states also where you have you no know, uh, two houses upper house and the lower house and there is the division of powers between the governments the powers between the governments are divided the next is parliamentary form of government okay see as india was ruled by britishers so we have adapted parliamentary form of government from them where you will have two executives real executive and the nominal executive so prime minister's leadership collective responsibility these are the features of parliamentary form of government okay then independent judiciary indian constitution adapted integrated and independent judiciary okay when we are saying integrated it means one single judicial system is followed throughout india okay and it is independent because it is free from the control of legislature and executive it is independent or free from the control of legislative and executive legislature and executive so these are the features some of the features of indian constitution lq you need to write at least 10 features okay next is directive principles of state policy now what are the directive principles directive principles they are the instructions given to the government by the constitution for making new policies and programs so part 4 of our constitution part 4 article 36 to 51 deals with directive principles the next is fundamental rights indian constitution it guaranteed six fundamental rights to all the citizens these fundamental rights are incorporated in part 3 from article 12 to 35 okay and with rights we have got some duties also 
fundamental duties. Now, these fundamental duties are incorporated in the Constitution in Part 4A. Okay, Part 4A. What is 4A? A means this is which this capital A, the letter capital A. It represents the amendment, amendment to the Constitution. So here, Part 4 was amended. Through 42nd Amendment, we added 10 fundamental duties. Again, through 86th Amendment, one more fundamental duty was added. So we have 11 fundamental duties and 6 fundamental rights. Then you have single citizenship. I told you, we, uh, this is a feature of unitary government and we have adapted this feature. Uh, every person who is born in India, he is the citizen of India. His regional identity has no importance. Why? To promote the unity among the Indians. So your region is not important. Your nation is important to you. Then you have universal adult franchise. What do you mean by universal adult franchise? Universal means all the citizens of India who are above the age of 18 years. They enjoy right to vote. When we are saying all the citizens, there is no discrimination on the basis of caste, religion or gender. That is universal adult franchise. Sometimes you will get a question in two marks. Universal adult franchise, bicameralism. Okay, so you can write in the same way. Next is bicameralism. Okay, so the constitution of India, it introduced bicameral legislature. So what do you mean by bicameral legislature? The legislature will have two houses, the upper house and the lower house. So Lok Sabha is the lower house and Rajya Sabha is the upper house. The central legislature, it consists of two houses. The last point is noble aims and objectives. Okay. So, the Indian constitution, it guarantees or it provides liberty, equality, fraternity and justice to all its citizens. And it declares India as a Soviet, socialist, secular and a, and a republican country. So these are some of the basic features of Indian constitution. If you are writing 10 features, any 10 features of your choice, it is not compulsory that you should write in the same order. No, any answer when you are writing, except your you know, fundamental rights and directive principles, if it is asked, all other answers, don't worry about the order. Write all the answers, all the you know, side headings or points, no need to maintain the order. You should uh, see. The uh, examiner will check your knowledge, how much you know. Okay, so order is not important. If the points you are writing, uh, you know, up and down, for example, you are instead of writing written and detailed constitution, you can write combination of rigidity and flexibility first. It's up to you. Order is not important, but make sure that you are attempting the complete paper. Now, coming to the paper, how you should attempt the paper. You know, you have three sections. Uh, so, you should start with the third section that is VSAQs. Try to attempt all 15 VSAQs. Okay, you will get 30 marks there. If you are attempting all the VSAQs, you can score 30 marks, then go for your LAQs and SAQs. And don't leave the questions. Suppose instead of no, uh, 15 questions, you are attempting only 10 questions or 8 questions, then uh, it will be difficult for you to you know, score marks or uh, get passing marks also. Try to attempt all the questions. Just for an example, if I tell you, if you are writing all 15 questions, if you are attempting 15 questions and you are getting one mark for each question, you can score 15 marks. Least I am talking about, least. Suppose you are uh, you have to write eight SAQs and you are getting two marks instead of five for each question. So eight twos are sixteen marks. So you are scoring thirty-one marks here. And when you are attempting three LAQs 
and you are getting two marks for it. Least I am talking. Then again another six marks, thirty-seven marks you will score. You may get you know full marks also. I am talking about least marks. So when you are attempting the paper for hundred marks, there is very less probability that you will fail. If you are attempting for you know less marks, if you are leaving the questions. There is a probability that you may fail here. So please, it's a request to all of you to attempt maximum paper. I always, you know, suggest or insist my students to attempt the paper. Don't leave the questions. You have been, you know, you know, attending your classes in college. You have been attending online classes like this. You have all the classes recorded now. You can, you know, uh, listen to the classes whenever you want. So whatever answer you can remember, if that is asked, and if you present it in a proper way, in a neat handwriting, and you are underlining the uh, side headings, writing in neat handwriting, you know, you know, question numbers you are writing properly, then you can, you know, pass your exam easily. Okay, so. I hope these classes will help you in clearing your paper. Uh, all the best to all of you. Thank you very much.